Well, hi there, and welcome to this episode of Inside PTI. We're glad to have you join us today. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing the use of seed firmers and comparing their yield impact and seed soil impact uh, compared to not using Keaton seed firmers. So, you know, seed firmers simply take a seed and, and push it down to the bottom of the seed trench. Many times in narrow seed trenches or just in standard planting, the seeds don't get all the way to the bottom of the seed trench, and that leaves an air pocket. And if we don't have that total surrounding of soil and that good seed to soil contact that we want for seeds, no matter, no matter the crop, we're specifically talking corn today, but those air pockets act as insulation and cause the seeds with the air pocket to germinate later than seeds completely surrounded by soil. So we see a yield loss come because of that, right? And so seed firmers are one way to ensure that good seed to soil contact. So let's look at some data that we have that talks about this. So we've been testing Keaton seed firmers for three years now, running pass with seed firmers on, take them off, run a pass without. And we saw on average in three years a 2.6 bushel gain from running seed firmers or about a $9.55 gain in corn, right? So what is a seed firmer? What, what is a Keaton seed firmer and why should I care about it? Well, when seeds don't make it to the bottom of the furrow, there's an air gap that causes the delay in emergence. Seed firmers press each seed to the bottom of the furrow to improve seed to soil contact. You'll end up with a crop stand you can be proud of. There's a visual difference in these. Now, what are the types of firmers? Well, there's a lot of types of Keaton seed firmers. I'll just highlight a, a few. There's um, standard tails, which are a white tail that run in the furrow and press the seeds down. And we have a quick attach bracket where those snap in easily or come out. We have the older style universal bracket that you may be using. Uh, one tip with those, and really, really any firmers, make sure you replace them often enough to maintain that 20 ounces of tension. The second newer uh, type of seed firmer is a low stick firmer. And many of you over the years have said, I can't use seed firmers because they build up with soil and then they start to drag seed or they ride up out of the seed trench. We have a new low stick firmer. Um, it's made out of a different material. It's a black material and you can see a picture of one here and you see there's no buildup on it. Used in sticky soils here in Texas and there's no buildup on it because of the material it's made from. It costs a little bit more than the standard firmer um, because of the different material, but it does a phenomenal job firming in those uh, sticky situations, the low stick works really well. Then there's also a firmer called a smart firmer that you can plug into your Precision Planning 2020 monitor and it measures some things down in the furrow as well as firm seed right to the bottom of the furrow. Now, what's the ROI of using a seed firmer? Any of those types of seed firmers, what's the ROI? Well, you know, a bracket and a tail, they start at $35 per row. And so on a 16 row planter, you put Keaton's on, we saw about, on average in three years, 2.6 bushels, um, you break even in 59 acres. So pretty quick ROI on a low cost product there. Now, we also get the question quite often, does the type of downforce system or downforce setting you run have an impact on the ROI that you get from running a seed firmer? And so just, just what the Precision Technology Institute is made for is to take questions like that and research them and provide you with answers that can help your operation. So we did a study in 2020 where we made two planter passes. We, we planted with too little downforce and in one pass we had Keaton seed firmers on and the next pass we didn't. We made two more planter passes, excessive downforce with Keaton seed firmers and without, and then again correct to downforce, automated delta force with seed firmers and without, all right? And so what we saw was where we planted too light, not enough downforce, we saw a 4.4 bushel gain with the seed firmer. So that's greater than what we saw with the correct. The three-year average of correct was 2.6. 2020 data was 1.7 bushels. And then excessive, it dropped, the, the gain dropped a little more with a 1.4 bushel gain. So what we see is where we ran too light and we know that there were seeds that got planted shallow Seed farmers getting that seed tucked into the soil provided a bigger yield increase than it did when downforce was correct or heavy. Now, I want to address one thing because some people look at this graph and they say, well, it looks like I just need to run more downforce and I don't need to put Keaton seed firmers on. That is a big, big mistake. If you were thinking down that way, change that thinking right now. If you look at a downforce study that we also have done and it is one of the inside PTI episodes, 
running correct downforce compared to excessive gained 6.4 bushels. So if you run excessive downforce to eliminate a Keaton, yeah, you might pick up 0.3 bushels, but you're going to give up 6.4 because your downforce is excessive and you have compaction and poor root development, right? So today's inside PTI tip is that perfect seed to soil contact is necessary for uniform germination of seeds which is followed up by consistent emergence. Firming seeds into the bottom of the trench is one aspect that will help you have that perfect seed to soil contact. Keaton seed firmers have various types, whether it's standard, low stick, or a smart firmer that can go on your planter and provide you fast ROI from getting that seed to soil contact perfect. If you have questions about seed firmers, any of the types, which type is best for your planter, please contact a local precision planting premier dealer if you don't have one, you can find one at plannerexpert.com. You put in your zip code and you can find one locally. If you have any questions about this specific study or any of our other studies for us here at Precision Planting, you can email us at insidepti at precisionplanting.com. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for being with us today.